want to create a cool and wonderful character, but you're not entirely sure how to go about doing that, and the characters you make tend to be rather boring and become basically just number crunches and dice rolling monkeys, and you really wish that your character had something more, something something that actually made them feel like a real character, and then once you start playing them, you realize that they're actually just rather nasty people, and you really wouldn't want to associate with them, and you have a tough time figuring out why they would even stay with the group in the first place, because they're just rather nasty, and how do you make your character likable? Guess what? You're about to find out. Hello and welcome to this very first player video in our new series layout thing. My name is Guy and today we're talking about making likeable PCs. Why? Why do we like the PC and to a large degree, why do we like you as a human? Now, this is not a new concept. I have done a video on this before many, 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 many moons ago, but I thought it deserves a refresher because I have seen so many characters cross my path as a dungeon master where I'm going... I wouldn't game with that PC. I'd game with you as a player most of the time, but I wouldn't game with that PC. The PC is boring. The PC has no... There's nothing there. I, they're useless. Why would I want that? Why would I want this? The, 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 go away. You are a self-centered, self-serving bastard. That's what you are. There you go. Off you go. Right. I mean, it, so how do we stop that? Well, it's a very easy way. Step back from the mechanics. Don't worry about the mechanics. Yes, your character has a plus 50 and everything. That's brilliant. That's wonderful. Your character is still a self-centered idiot. So how do we actually like your character or why do we like your character? It's your responsibility to make sure that the character is likable, not other people's responsibilities. So what do you do? Well, we have these three lovely, lovely words capability proactivity and sociability so often i see proactivity and sociability completely forgotten completely forgotten and when one player character tries to be sociable the rest shut them off as if they are dead you are dead to me why why would you want to do that you're killing the likability of your bc why it's so weird Capability is what everybody goes for. Oh, I've got the greatest numbers. My stats are absolutely huge and brilliant, and it's the perfect build. There are other YouTube channels you can watch on how to make the perfect build. It It's one out of three. So the perfect build might be perfect, but the rest of the character is particularly dull. Capability means you know what you are doing, and you do it well. Great. Step one, done. Your character is a wizard. You know how to cast magic. If your character is not good at casting magic, then what is your character good at? This is another thing that I find frequently happening is people say, oh, I want to play a character who's useless. Okay, great. How many useless friends do you have? And why do you keep them around if they're completely useless? For the other two reasons. So then you have to have the other two reasons in order for them to keep you around. In le I'm not even going to go in the point that you keep them around because you want to make yourself feel better. That's a whole different kettle of psychological trauma that you will have to unpack in your own time. But the point is, if you are capable, you are capable of doing something really well. If you are incapable of doing anything, then you need to compensate by being more useful in the other two things. Proactivity means that you are out there doing stuff. So when the party comes to rest around the campfire, you are sharpening swords. You are prepping for the next day. You are going into the market to buy extra rope, to buy caltrops, to buy crampons, to make sure that everything is ready for the adventure tomorrow. You're making sure there's food. You're keeping everything up to date. You're finding out information. You're being proactive. You're not just, you arrive in town, what are you doing? I'll wait for the others to finish shopping. That's not proactivity, that's inactivity. We are all capable of that, but that does not mean that it is something that you would want as a, a tribute. Imagine if your party arrives in town and everyone is trying to be useful. Wow, that would be amazing. Rather than you arrive in town and only one person is trying to be the useful and the rest of you are waiting for the town encounter to finish. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And then sociability, that is where you are actually engaging with NPCs and with other PCs and then sharing the information. So when you turn to your fellow PC and say, so what are your hopes and dreams? If that PC turns around and says, I have none, I want to die. 
There's zero sociability happening there. Do you really care about that PC now, the one who just wants to die? Maybe they're very good at their job. Maybe they occasionally help out, but if they're not wanting to be social, well, okay, you're the gruff, silent type. You better make sure that you're proactive and you're capable. The bottom line is that you need to be able to have at least two out of these three things done very well in order for people to actually like your character. The old notion of, well, we have to roleplay together because that's the party, and, well, the party has to stay together because, well, that's the party, is absolutely the wrong approach to take. The party should stay together because you want to stay together. I don't have very many friends in real life that I don't want to have as friends, and if I do have people like that, I certainly don't go on adventures with them. They've got to have some of these attributes. You really have to make sure that you have these attributes if you are creating a character. So the art of this entire thing, however, is when you are bad at something, balance it out by being good at other things. So you might be a bad fighter, but then you are a good chef. No person is useless at everything, regardless of what people might think. There is always something that they are good at. Could it be telling jokes? Could it be finding the silver lining? Could it be at building the morale of the group? Could it be just cooking a wholesome meal which mechanically has no value whatsoever, but which adds to the role-playing aspect? So your character might be bad at being proactive. They're very, 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 very lazy. But when they are actually encouraged to do something, or when they do do something, they do it incredibly well, and they make sure that everybody's included. That's one of the important things to bear in mind. NPCs have two out of three things in this list. If you only have two out of the three things in this list and you're not compensating for the one that you're missing, your character's just an NPC. So if you're happy to be an NPC, well then great, this video has been a waste of your life, but you're an NPC, so it doesn't matter. Whereas if you're a PC, you will want to improve upon these things. You'll want to make sure that you're the hero of the story, quite literally, rather than just the NPCs that are in the background. That's my take on how to make a likable character. How do you do this in a logical way? Use those numbers, use your own intuition. When the game is running, that's really when these are important to, to, to really bring to the fore. And you're gonna find that if you even tonight sit down and look at your character and you go, okay, well, actually my character hasn't been very proactive. My character hasn't been particularly sociable. Uh, and my character is pretty good at stuff, but the other two I need to work on. Now you've got something to work on. Your role-playing experience is going to become that much stronger. Those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts on how do you make a character likable? Do you think these three things, do you think it's just too much? It's like, no, I can't do all of that. No, I'm an, I'm an NPC. I mean, maybe you want to be an NPC. That's absolutely fine. But mm, I don't think it's really where role-playing is at. Until next time, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming. We interrupt this regular show to talk about this new product, which is an offering from myself and a very good friend of the channel. That is A Tale of Two GMs. It's a rather remarkable collaboration where Christopher Dravis and myself got together, got given the same 10 NPC portraits, and were asked to make two separate adventures. Now, these adventures are available to you on our website, www.greatgamemaster.com, where you can purchase these adventures, and that gives you an unlock code to come to World Anvil. Now, you don't need a subscription to World Anvil, but if you do want one, you can get a discount by using the code GREATGM when you head on over to their website. A link is down below. Now, A Tale of Two GMs, it's two separate adventures, and it contains everything you could possibly need to run these adventures. So we've got the Inheritance Adventure, as written by Christopher Dravis, and that's got battle maps. All of them are pinned and fully interactive. It has all of the NPCs you could possibly want, and a scale of lovers, which is about two dragons fighting over various things. And those feature maps that I have produced uh, for uh, various different encounters. As you see, there are stat blocks for monsters. There are the wonderful maps that uh, Dungeon Fog allows us to pin things with so we can follow through. There's boxes to read out aloud. There's the interactive, how to make a 
roll and get a score to hit or to deal damage, all contained within the housing of the World Anvil web page. Plus, it links through once your players have completed things. We can also check out the statistics of these amazing monsters. So I turned the Minotaur into Malakau the Terrible, whilst Chris turned it into something else. And in order to find out what that is, you're going to have to get the adventure. So find that adventure on our website or www.greatgamemaster.com. Pick up your copy today and enjoy two very different, very creative tales from two GMs. <laughs>